All right, welcome into another Harmonious at Lunch. I am super excited to be back with you today. We have a very interesting guest and a unique topic again. I'm all about this, bringing unique topics to the Harmonious business architecture. Before we get into it, let's recap what is Harmonious. Harmonious is the disruptive architecture, the way to look at your business so you have a truly harmonious business that can scale in any environment. We've broken down the 10 key disciplines of business, and we want you to implement that into your business so that you can scale, reach the goals you want to. And just a quick little update from us here at What If. Today, officially, we went live with our new business boot camp coming up at the end of the month. I will put that on the screen here, whatif.com slash navigate. We realized that working with all of our clients there is one foundational problem holding them back from scaling, and that would be found in the navigation portion of their business. So what we said was, hey, let's solve for this. Let's put together a five-day boot camp where we can bring people in for one hour a day, really optimize and work on the navigation portion of the business, traditionally called strategic planning, but that's boring. So we call it navigation, and we want to get you set up for a foundation of growth in 2024. Now, enough about me, enough about us. I want to get to our guest here. First and foremost, let me welcome in Jonathan. Jonathan, thank you so much for being here at Harmonious at Lunch. How are you? I'm awesome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is a, a really cool episode. If you heard from that quick little hello, Jonathan is not from here. He's from Australia. Um, and we're going to dive in. So we're going to talk about today the three steps to gaining a competitive advantage through neurodiversity. So let's let's start there. Can you define for me first for the audience what is neurodiversity in your terms? So neurodiversity is basically um, conditions that result in uh, brains thinking differently to what's called neurotypical. Um, that can be through underlying conditions such as autism, ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, and a whole raft of different conditions. Um, so a lot of um, people classified as neurotypical um, might have uniform ways of thinking, but neurodiverse um, can approach problems through different means, um, see the world in a different way, and experience the world in different ways. Yeah, and you know, I come from a background looking at business differently. I I would see this as an advantage in business because you have the ability to look at things, at situations, and problems differently. So. Is that is that how you see it first of all and then how do you see this show up in the the business environment oh absolutely um uh, so i can use myself an example and many clients that i've worked with uh, so many years ago i was working in it um, as a system administrator and i was looking after a system that was growing and one of my main roles in that job was to do weekly reporting and that took probably two days of my time and the system was as i said it was growing uh, it was taking more and more time each week and so i identify as having uh, autism and adhd and the adhd side of me doesn't like doing boring repetitive stuff uh, so the autism side of me got that hyper focus which is an autistic trait where we find a special interest and we just pretty much latch onto it and research it and um, just do it until it needs to be done um, and so I basically um, didn't have any idea how the scripts or anything worked. So I reverse engineered them, uh, figured out what the input was, what the output was, and eventually got to the point where um, automated it, got it down to about an hour processing time in the first instance. And then over time, the system kept growing and just take out more and more of my time again and had, had a second uh, buy of the cherry, so to speak um and eventually got it to the point where it was automated didn't have to do anything it intercepted the traffic on the network um and it was able to provide real-time statistics and so that saved uh, a significant amount of time saved up to probably one full-time equivalent employee in the beginning um, and then as time went on um, it's saved even more and more time i actually got complaints from the manager uh, saying uh, why aren't you doing any work because uh, there weren't many incidents come in all of it because previously we were reactive and so having access to this type of information meant we could be proactive and so less incidents will come in and so there, there had to be a bit, bit of an adjustment of expectations for management there 
another example was uh, a client of mine who I worked with um, in uh, a previous business that I had uh, selling Lego pieces. Um, so basically, I've got a reasonable attention to detail, but uh, his his attention to detail just blew mine out of the water. Uh, so we had an error rate around nine percent, um, and even though he was a little bit slow at processing the um, the orders, um, he was able to get the error rate down to three percent, which saved time in other areas and saved money and in improved our reputation. So about um, when measuring the benefits of neurodiverse employees, it's it helps to take a holistic view, not uh, not a soloed view of particular KPI. So yes, he was slow in processing the orders. So if I just measured from that KPI, it wouldn't have looked so good. But having that holistic view, it actually provided quite a benefit to the business. Yeah, I'm I'm so glad you mentioned that too, because that's that's what we harp on with the harmonious architecture. How everything in a business is linked. And the degree to which you're able to leverage those links is how you can scale more efficiently. So what exactly what you were talking about right there is one metric actually showed up in several different areas in terms of you know financial, customer service, error rates. Those are huge benefits just from, you know, if you zone in on the one little thing, you may have gotten rid of that employee because they were a, a bad fit, right? But because they were slower, but actually they had so many other benefits outside of their one little narrow focus. So um, really cool that, that you and the company were able to recognize that. Now, nothing you said there had me feeling like neurodiversity is any downside in business. It sounds like there's only major upsides. So we're going to keep it at that. But because I, I want to really highlight the positives of having people who think and, and process things differently in a business. Um, what are some ways a, as a leader, as a business owner, I can look for these types of people who, who, and really identify what their key strengths are and put them in the right roles. Do you have any sort of a, a framework around that? So there is a framework in the book. Um, so the, so the book I've written, um, covers a whole bunch of different things all the way from mindset and culture um through to uh how so as i mentioned kpis how or okrs whatever you want to call them performance measures are measured um all the way through to uh, the employee life cycle and so that life cycle is career centric uh starting at the recruiting going through to onboarding providing ongoing support and the exit or transition uh, and so starting at the recruiting uh, it's about having those position descriptions um, so that they're written in inclusive language. Uh, a lot of people that I've worked with um, struggle with interviews and traditional methods. Uh, so it's about thinking outside the square to begin with. Um, so having like work trials or looking at other ways to uh, conduct the, the whole uh, recruitment process. Uh, in Australia, we have what's called disability employment services. I don't know if you've got similar things in the US there. Yeah. Uh, so tapping into those in Australia, it's free. Uh, so I've done quite a lot of recruiting. Have, I've spent zero dollars uh, to recruit quite a few people. Uh, so I've got, I think my team's up to 14 at the moment. Uh, a lot of that is entry level stuff. Um, but so tapping into government resources, um and um yeah so it's just thinking outside the square yeah that's amazing and I, I can tell you from experience i've hired actually a number of people who would fall in the neurodiverse category and you're right it, at, at the surface level it could be like wow that interview was terrible or this resume doesn't make any sense um but really just giving people the opportunity to shine doing odd and job interviews i, I love that I, I love that for any position but um, really to see what people are capable of. I think that's phenomenal. Um, so I've put the link to Jonathan's book on the screen here. He just published it recently. And I think all of the things you just mentioned are right in line with a harmonious architecture in terms of how you're writing your job descriptions, how you're attracting people, training and supporting them on the job. Um, so please go check out Jonathan's book. But now in the, in the title of the episode, it's three steps to gaining a competitive advantage through neurodiversity. Can you tease us a little bit with those three steps? So people definitely go buy your book, but also we can take a little bit of action from this episode. 
Yeah. So the first and the most important step is creating that psychologically safe environment. Uh, so allowing people to be themselves, uh, to ask questions without feeling ridiculed. Um, and the second step is setting up those mechanisms for support. Um, so having accommodations, so people with ADHD might struggle with time management. So helping them implement systems, put in reminders, um, having AI take meeting notes or not having meetings unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, I use a case study in my book, uh, which is Lloyd's Banking Group in the UK, uh, which centralizes how the accommodations are implemented. Uh, so that's, that's one thing to consider. And that's actually quite uh, scalable as well. So you can start it when the business is small, have uh, one place that deals with it, and then that can grow as the business grows. Instead of having each line manager responsible for implementing accommodations, uh, there can be improved efficiencies uh, through doing uh, through a centralized process, much like HR or IT. Uh, and the third step is advocate. So tell your neurodiversity story, which is what I'm doing today. And what that does is um, helps build a brand uh, and get the word out there, open to new ideas, um, can also open up to opportunities. You might not even know what they are. Um, so I've, I've had some awesome opportunities over the years um, just by telling my story. Uh, I've been on stages throughout Australia. Um, so had I not told my story, I had no idea. I'd probably be well behind where I'd be today. Uh, so get out there, do networking. Um, and yeah, just give the, I guess, tell how neurodiversity um, has helped um, get and um, yeah. That's awesome. And I, you're obviously telling your story through the book, but I, I love that you're also giving actionable strategies through the book too. Um, one of the things that you said that could potentially scare business owners, especially small business owners and entrepreneurs is the word accommodations. You know, yep. we, we hear that stuff and we <clears> think <throat> price tag immediately. I think that's like, unfortunately, those two things go hand in hand. But can you give me a little bit of insight um, and the other small business owners watching? What could accommodations look like? And, and also, why is that not such a scary word? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so research has shown that the majority of accommodations don't cost a thing. Hmm. Uh, and a lot of accommodations also cost less than $500. Wow. Um, there is a lot of government support out there as well. Uh, so in Australia, we have things like job access. Um, they provide things like uh, training um, and other types of support. So there's a physical, um, physical like someone needs noise cancelling headphones, they might be able to assist with that. I believe the US and UK and across the world, they might have similar uh, schemes to that. Uh, so it's about engaging those government agencies. Um, a lot of, and so going back to those free accommodations, um, one of the simplest one is flexible work times. Doesn't cost a thing. Um, work from home, um, minimal if any costs. Uh, so with my team, I, I honestly don't care where they get the job done. Um, if they're on a beach in the Bahamas or um, if they're in their basement or whatever. Um, my main concern is they have the they get the job done. Um, they have the support they need so they can contact me or another team member um, easily. Uh, it's good to get together with the team every now and then uh, face to face because building that uh, connection. But for day to day stuff, um, it's probably one of, one of the most uh, cost effective methods. And the beauty about the accommodations is it not only can benefit neurodiverse people, can benefit everyone in the workplace as well. So having those sort of arrangements uh, makes creates a great working culture um, where people want to stay. So, you know, staff retention can be quite uh, an important thing. So recruitment can cost quite a bit. Um, so I've actually had employees leave me and then come back because they love where they work. Uh, and so creating that I guess that links back into that whole psychological, psychologically safe environment and having those supports in place. Yeah, those are those are great tips. And I can tell you too, in, in definitely the US, 
There are resources available, like Jonathan said, there are in uh, Australia, um, you know, hiring people, making accommodations. You can reach out to local agencies. There's a lot of local nonprofits, too, that will assist you in getting set up the way your business needs to in order to accommodate um, your workforce. And yeah, I don't know a single person who a flexible schedule wouldn't benefit. So these things, like you said, they are across all of your employees. They will benefit everybody making accommodations. I can tell building culture is very important for you. Um, so what's what's one thing you want people to walk away from this episode with in, in terms of how to leverage a neurodiverse um, team to grow their business? Um, the one takeaway I want people to learn is don't be afraid. Um, there is support out there. Um, and um, yeah, but give it a go. Um, you'd be surprised where it takes you. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Really great advice. Um, now, tell me, where can people connect with you if they want to learn more? Aside from, I'll put this back on the screen. Uh, the website on the screen is where you can go buy Jonathan's book. Um, where can they connect with you? Are you on social media or um, anything like that? Yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn. That's my main one. Um, so I believe it's LinkedIn.com or just search me up on LinkedIn, Jonathan Laylaws. There's not too many of me in the world. I'm in Canberra, Australia. Um, so I'm the CEO of um, Self Plus Plus, which is the disability agents uh, company that I, I mentioned earlier. Um, so feel free to connect with me and follow me on LinkedIn. Um, so I do post um, some of my insights. So last night I posted an extract from my book, uh, which went through different traits of the autism spectrum. Uh, so I know a lot, of, a lot of places, a lot of people think that autism is a one-dimensional thing. Some places um, where it's less autistic, more autistic. Uh, others say it's a 2D thing where there's traits and different levels of traits. And so the post I put last night uh, takes it to a different level where there's traits, uh, intensities, but there's also context as well. So it's a whole 3D thing. Uh, so. A lot of different insights like that. Um, I'll be posting the book over the coming months. Um, I'm also happy to um, field any questions your audience might have as well. Um, quick uh, message, um, connect, um, point you in the right direction, see what I can do to help out. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing all that. For those of you watching live, I hope you caught it. Otherwise, if you come back and watch the replay, um, if you're watching the replay now, it's in the show notes, all of the ways you can contact Jonathan. Um, and please put your questions, your ahas in the comments. I'll be sure to get them over to Jonathan um, and, and connect you so you can reach out to him and see if, uh, if he can help you in your business too. So Jonathan, this was amazing. Thank you so much for coming here. Um, let's tie this together now to the, the harmonious architecture because it's it's so important and, and you touched on so many different areas of the 10 disciplines. I just want everybody to see, you know, stop looking at your business as this one dimensional or two dimensional uh, thing where everything is independent in silos and nothing touches. So in just this conversation, we have talked about uh, navigation, which I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, we have a five day boot camp coming up to optimize the core of your business. So, you know, your, your mission, your core values, your vision of your company and your employees know that too. It doesn't matter how many employees you have or how you're hiring. If you're not leveraging the navigation portion of your business, we also talked about most obviously home humans optimize in a meaningful environment. Jonathan touched on that with having his, uh, his team have flexible work environments making accommodations so people feel feel cared for, seen, and loved at work. And you had one employee who left and came back. I mean, if that's not the most perfect example of, of home in a business, I don't know what is, but that is more than possible for your business. It's not just a place where people go to work. It's where they come to spend a third of their life and make a difference. So make sure that you have optimized that environment for them to thrive. And we talked about a number of other areas, but the moral of the story here is it is so key to make sure you're looking at your business as a whole when you hear anything, especially these episodes and from people like Jonathan. How does he impact all 10 areas of your business and how can his book right there, it's on the screen again, help you grow your business by leveraging both what he teaches and the harmonious business architecture. So I encourage you to go over there and get it. If you want to come to our boot camp at the end of this month, please whatif.com slash navigate. We will see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Jonathan, thank you again for being here. This was an awesome episode. Thanks for having me.